Okay, so today we have Virginia Plain by Roxy Music. So, it has been a long while since I've uh, done a reaction to Roxy Music, and somebody requested this song, and apparently, you know, it's one of their best. So, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, finally, let's finally uh, come back to Roxy Music, for God's sake. So, here we go. Uh, only three minutes long, so uh, not too long of a tune. And uh, anyway, let's just get into it and talk about it after. Yeah. Fading in. Make me a deal and make it straight. Oh, Sally Seal, I take it to love it in the ashes. I hope they get over it. Ripping around the long time. It's hard to try to try to make the big time. You're so chic to the rebel of the week. Ladies of the mountain streamline. Midnight you can see in the floors. Dance the cha cha foo to sunrise. Opens up its cool support for wow. Just like the windows look the same. So me and you, just me too, got to search for something new. Oh, it's done. My God, <laughs> what an abrupt ending. Uh, surprise again then. Okay, okay. So Virginia Plain from Roxy Music. Like I said, you know, just two minutes, 58 seconds here. Um, but uh, they packed a lot in that short amount of time. Um, I don't know what that voice crack was. Anyway, uh, my God, with <laughs> how the song started off, like I said, you know, it's like a fade in. You know, we have like the keyboards. Uh, I, I actually, let me just see the personnel here for a second. Um, cause I want to talk about, you know, all these instruments and all these sounds and all this weirdness I was hearing, um, weirdness in a good way, I have to say as well. Um, and I know that this was one of, uh, Roxy Music's first songs and also, you know, a song that kind of put them on the map and everything. And, um, it's just like, you were, it, this is that you being introduced to just their sound. I mean, from Brian Ferry's, you know, voice. I mean, the way I, and I don't know what I've said in the past about his voice because it's been so long, uh, you know, so many videos ago. Um, but uh, what I really got, you know, as a fan of the Cars, uh, he kind of sounded like Rick Ocasek to me. It was like, a, it was like a fusion between Rick Ocasek and Bob Dylan. Uh, and I was just, I don't know, I can't explain it, but that's what came to my head when I was listening to the song, Rick Ocasek and Bob Dylan. Um, anyway, I was just like, I, you know, his, obviously he has kind of a deep voice, 
Um, and just the way he, again, he would pronounce some words that just, it almost sounded kind of funny. Um, I'll get to the lyrics in a second here, but, uh, you know, just talk about some words that I thought were kind of, you know, sounded kind of fun. Anyway, that he delivered. And, um, anyway, and like I was talking about, you know, there's the, the, the synths here. There's, you know, and how it's just like, again, you're being introduced to this band because, again, it was 1972 when this came out. I think they started in 70. And, I mean, they even talk about that right off the top of the lyrics, you know, how they've been, they've been going for a while. But, again, I'll get to that in a second after I talk about the music here. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say, you know, Brian Ferry here on vocals. And, again, this is all just for this song. There's so many goddamn instruments on this one. It says he was, uh, Brian was on vocals, piano, uh, mellotron, and harmonica. And it goes on, uh, Andy, I want to say McKay, I think that's how you say it, not Mackie, McKay, on oboe and saxophone here. Um, <laughs> and it goes on, uh, Brian Eno on synthesizer and treatments, it says. Uh, Paul Thompson on drums, Phil Manz Manzanera on electric guitar and rick kenton on bass guitar so the last three there were easier to say my goodness uh you know not as many uh, instruments as freaking brian and andy but anyway um like i was saying you know there's the saxophone there's an oboe for god's sakes there's the the synthesizers and it's just like it's so many different noises <laughs> noises and uh for the early 70s here you can tell how influential this must have been i know um you know one of my favorite bands being the sex pistols i mean there's a picture there for god's sakes but anyway steve jones guitarist of the sex pistols was uh very influenced by roxy music and especially at this time um and again it's just like i feel like roxy music here was showing what you could do with uh with with music it sounds dumb to say i mean that's the, you know the the, the freaking name in their in their name the thing in their name you know roxy music um they're showing you know what music could be um and again it it sounds kind of new wave before new wave became you know big uh and that's what i don't know that's just what i got you know again just i could tell how influential this kind of was and i see here uh the genre that this is placed under is glam rock uh which i guess i can also get but yeah i just got a little bit of new wave in there too and i mean i talk about you know a punk band you know like the sex pistols being influenced by them so you know punk punk and new wave you know are kind of related there as well so i don't know i i just i just love everything that i got from this just not even talking about the lyrics or anything because i always like to you know see oh what's the meaning behind the lyrics or whatever but you know here again there's so many different instruments there's a guitar solo in there all of a sudden i wasn't expecting a good uh, guitar solo like a minute in um and again for this being like less than three minutes uh, like i said they packed so much in the track and uh and i mean the the lyrics uh here you know kind of you know a lot of lyrics again kind of wordy kind of like what i talked about uh last week with um squeeze uh and cool for cats and, and you know they you know a band who can do you know a song like this uh in a short amount of time but have so many different you know words and everything uh it's just i don't know it blows me away how you know because that delivery they have to be kind of fast and uh, brian here again i just love his delivery and i loved his his i mean just his voice because again it's unlike anything i've heard i talked about the fusion that i hear in it um but yeah I, this song was just so it was, it's it's weird uh, in a good way. It's just like, you know, nothing, you know, especially coming out at this time, I can imagine there wasn't too much like this uh, <laughs> at the time uh, when, you know, when somebody heard this for the first time, I'm sure they were like, what the hell is this? Anyway, um, my goodness, um, I am on uh, Genius.com here, like I usually am. There is a little bit of an about. Uh, it just talks about in 1964, when Brian Ferry was an art student, he painted a picture titled Virginia Plain. It was reportedly of a packet of cigarettes and a woman on a plane uh three images all of which represented virginia plain um it also goes on to say some more stuff but anyway i guess it does say you know it was, uh, this song was featured uh prominently in the 1998 movie velvet goldmine so i mean again it's one of uh you know the band's you know best songs wherever like i said that i found out and uh, again it's been used in some things as well so yeah and you're talking about a painting here here so again that's what i was kind of getting you know not knowing that before you know listening to the song and now knowing it you know it's about brian a painting brian did i guess in 64 and again how the song came out uh was released in 72 or whatever so you know eight years later anyway it, it seems like for the 60s you know you're talking about the 60s here um, it seems like that's, they're talking about the time, he's talking about the times of the 60s there, you know, the six, uh, 1964, talking about, uh, just, I don't know, things that he saw, and you're talking about, um, you know, the Virginia plane, talking about cigarettes and everything, and before, you know, people found out that, I guess, you know, cigarettes weren't too good for you, pretty much, anyway, um, and, you know, just all these all these images that he talks about uh kind of represent uh the 60s and what he saw uh and i mean just to talk about the lyrics i guess you know make me a deal and make it straight all signed and sealed i'll take it to robert e lee and i'll show it uh and it goes on i hope and pray he don't blow it because we've been around a long time 
Just try, 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 trying to make it to the big time. And again, when I heard that, you know, I, I'm thinking because the band, you know, started in 70 and this was like, you know, a couple years in, it, it seems, you know, like they're, he's talking about, you know, the band themselves and you're talking about taking a Robert E. Lee. And actually there is an annotation here on genius.com again. Um, and it talks about, uh, you know, who Robert E. Lee is. Cause I mean, Robert E. Lee obviously was a Confederate general. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it goes on here. It does say Robert Lee is a musical lawyer who represented Rocky music. Rocky music, my God, Roxy music, um, and, uh, and later co-founded Lee and Thompson, now a major music law firm in 1983. So they're talking about, again, taking to Robert Lee, whatever they're, they're, who they're represented by, uh, hopefully, you know, they'll get a goddamn hit finally. And it also goes on to say here, Robert E. Lee, of course, on the other hand, was a confe uh, Confederate soldier and all that stuff. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, we've been around for a long time. And again, talking about, you know, been around for a long time. Like I said, it was, it was only like a couple, you know, two or three years, whatever it was. But I mean, again, when you're trying and trying so much, like they say, you know, just trying and trying to make it big time. Um, that can feel like a long, a long time, especially when you're young. Uh, it's just like, Jesus, are we ever going to make it? And, uh, obviously, uh, I, I think you can say that, uh, Roxy Music didn't make it. Um, anyway, it did make it. Uh, it goes on, you know, second verse, take me on a roller coaster, take me for an airplane ride, take me for a six day wonder. And again, you're talking about in the sixties here, uh, when this, when he, you know, when this painting was, painting was done, I mean, you know, early, late, early seventies, whatever. But again, all these things, you know, roller coaster, airplanes, they're, you know, it's not the technology, or maybe not technology, but it's not this, you know, they don't look the same, you know, back in the 60s, I'm just thinking of what an airplane and a roller coaster look like compared to today. And it's just like, I don't know, it's just, I just like, you know, thinking of, you know, that stuff and the images again of how, you know, uh, we didn't have, I guess you could say we didn't have the technology we do now, you know, to talk about airplanes and everything. But anyway, <laughs> um, it goes on, take me for a six day wonder, but don't you throw me, don't you throw my pride aside besides what's real and make believe. But yes, Brian kind of getting a little philosophical here, uh, talking about what's real and make believe. <laughs> um, anyway, and then you want Baby Jane's and Acapulco. Uh, and I wasn't looking at the lyrics here when I heard that. And I was like, you know, what the hell did he just say? And again, I just loved his delivery of the word. It's just, and again, it almost reminds me of like, uh, something like Devo. I get all these different things that come to mind, and that's why I can feel how influential this song was because I talk about how this inspi inspired, you know, Steve Jones and the Sex Whistles, but also I can imagine this inspired, like I said, Devo or the Cars or whatever. You could just you hear those sounds that would become so familiar later on. And it's just, I, again, these, these guys, they knew what they were doing, obviously. Um, and going on, you know, we are flying down to Rio. And again, it does talk about here in an annotation on Genius How, again, these are movie references, you know, flying down to Rio was a 30s film. And again, you're talking about uh, Baby Jane here from the 60s, another film reference. So again, I just love how he's talking about films talking about these images of america uh during the 60s here and it's just almost you know reminiscent of like um uh, don mclean's american pie which i think came out around the same time here early 70s 72 71 something like that but that's just what also comes to mind i got i gotta say uh and obviously this song is a lot shorter than american pie anyway uh going on to the third verse you know throw me a line i'm sinking fast clutching at straws can't make it uh havana sound we're trying a hard edge a hipster jiving hipster jiving i don't know if hipster you know you talk about hipsters today um i don't know when the first time somebody used hipster but i feel like you know these guys must have been around uh you know talking about hipsters anyway uh i just didn't know that hipsters were a thing back in the 60s but i guess they were uh, 70s as well anyway i guess they were um last picture shows down the drive and you're so sheer you're so chic teenage rebel of the week um and i love the rhyming there but i have to say I like how this this whole like talk about obviously this is about you know his painting you're talking about the Virginia Plains was the name of it you're talking about tobacco and a woman and all this stuff and uh, you know a beautiful scenery whatever in his painting but um again we're talking about kind of the band here and how it seems like you know he's talking about throw me a line I'm think I'm sinking fast seems like another reference to the band you know clutching out of straws we're uh, Havana sound we're trying hard edge uh, hipster jiving it's just like we're trying things to make it that's what i get you know again about the band you know the band's still trying to make it here um and then we go on you know again flavors of the mountain streamline midnight blue casino floors and again just such great Im imagery here talking about the mountains and midnight blue i love that color i mean <laughs> anyway and you go and dance the cha-cha through till sunrise and again just so many different references of the time um and you go on and on and i'll just go to the last verse here uh, far beyond the pale horizon, someplace near the desert strand, and where my Studebaker takes me, of course, Studebaker, an old car there, uh, you know, and again, I just, it's a great word, anyway, Studebaker, um, that's where I'll make my stand, but wait, 
Can't you see her holes are main? What's her name? Virginia Plain. And again, just an abrupt ending there that I didn't I didn't expect to you know just end off like that. And again, that's just one thing you know you got with the song was just like you didn't know what was coming, you didn't know how it was going to end, you didn't know anything really. And again, just the instruments in this track, just showing. I mean, again, the band showing what they could do, just wanting to make it so bad. And obviously they did, and um, you know went on to have you know so much more success. And uh, this was just the start. So anyway. Oh, I really enjoyed this track, this track, I have to say. It was so different. Um, and again, it was, it was, like I already said, but it was like kind of new wave before it got big. And I know this also, you know, I think I already said, but how this is kind of considered glam rock or whatever. But yeah, you can just hear how people were influenced by this and would, you know, become, you know, musicians later on. And you can tell what they took from Roxy Music. So anyway, what a great track. What a uh, inspirational track as well and influential. My goodness. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. I don't know why I always bop my head when I say that stuff, but I really appreciate it. And <laughs> I will talk to you guys again very soon.